A very good morning to all. On behalf of the Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, I welcome you all to this program, Pathways 2022, Building a Future with Civil Engineering. Now I request Dr. M. Selva Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering and Assistant HOD to welcome the gathering. Thank you, Madam. A very warm good morning. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all for this uh, Pathways uh, program. I'm extremely happy to welcome our uh, chief guest, Mr. Nagesh Puttaswamy, Zonal Head, Southwide Topping and RMD Ultratech Cement Limited for this uh, wonderful Pathway program. I'm happy to welcome our alumnus, Mr. Aravind Vishwanathan, Structural Engineer, OM Engineering Services, Orlando, USA, to share his thoughts in this wonderful occasion. I also welcome our final year students, Ms. Nancy and Ms. Darshini, to share their experience at SPCE in this great occasion. With immense pleasure, I also welcome all the parents and their wards who made effort to join in this great ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So today's agenda will be, uh, first we will hear from our uh, alumni, so the alumni success story, and then we'll have uh, Mr. Nagesh uh, Putta Swami to talk on civilization to civil engineering. And then we'll be going through the career in civil engineering and uh, the students will be sharing uh, the campus life at SVC. Okay. So to start with, uh, we'll have the alumni success story. So it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Arvind Vishwanathan our uh, alumni student of 2011 to 15 batch so he has been a very good student so he has uh, obviously done his b civil engineering from here and after that he has done his ms civil engineering degree from university of florida usa he is also a professional engineer uh, currently he is a structural engineer working at om engineering services inc in orlando usa so with over four years of experience Arvind is proficient in the structural design and detailing of vehicular bridges, pedestrian bridges, retaining walls, culverts, uh, signal structures, and sign structures. So Arvind also works in the design of roadways, land development, roadway, and site lighting. I welcome you, Arvind, and it's uh, very great that in spite of the time variation, it's, it's, I think it's midnight there. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, please take over the session. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the kind words. I, uh, I'm very happy to be a part of this uh, call here, and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity given to me by uh, SVC. It's uh, great to bring back those memories uh, from my time at SVC. Uh, so, like, uh, basically, I'm uh, going to start sharing, like, uh, about my journey into civil engineering and what i went through and what i'm doing right now so like as soon as i like did my uh, 12th board exams uh, like every other student i have the dilemma of uh, like what course to choose uh just a second Yeah, uh, like after my 12th board exams, uh, I had uh, a dilemma of what course to choose. And uh, I had one thing in my mind, which was clear, like I did not want to do anything uh, like uh, with ha which had to do with uh, computer science or uh, electrical and electronics. Like I've always been uh, an outdoor person and like, uh, like I am curious to learn different things. So naturally like i was uh, like inclined towards like a core course like a mechanical automobile or civil engineering and more and more i looked into the three different courses like uh, i loved uh, civil engineering more civil engineering like uh, has the basics of uh, physics and mathematics which i was uh, pretty good at uh, during my school education so i was naturally gravitated towards the field of uh, civil engineering 
civil engineering um like uh, as you all know like has a lot of uh, different branches like structural engineering environmental geotech and svc provided a great platform and a great infrastructure to learn all the fundamentals of all these engineering aspects uh, of civil so like when i started out at svc initially the coursework and uh, the culture it was a little bit difficult to get adjusted to but with the guidance of like our good uh, professors and uh, like online uh, tutorials i was able to get uh, well into like uh, the depths of engineering for the first two years like uh, i was learning the fundamentals of like all the different aspects of civil engineering and uh, that like ensured like uh, my basics are strong to be a good civil engineer that i am today right now and svc like i said is a great college to start off your engineering career the staff are very very uh, helpful and friendly and they are knowledgeable and of course they they are always uh, have their doors open for students who have uh, like doubts or extra like ideas or innovations and things like that svc was like a great place they they gave us opportunity to like study and innovate and uh, also like they trusted us with uh, all the lab equipment and stuff like that and that's something which as a budding student you need to like get your hands on experience uh, with all the equipment and all the, like say cad softwares all those things and svc provided uh, all those opportunities for us and uh, like for the last 2 years of my uh, four year b uh, education that was when like i was uh, more like involved into the depth of civil engineering like those courses like the heavy courses like structural analysis like the steel structures foundation analysis all those uh, like courses like when i studied and when i understood how things work and all those it like greatly like helped progress as a as an engineer and during my time at svc i also got a opportunity to do a lot of projects a couple of uh, in plant trainings at uh, different institutions so those helped as well so one of the projects that i did was with uh, gopalakrishnan sir uh, the, he helped us uh, guide to design um, cell phone towers so usually like uh, when i was uh, studying at svc and when we were going through the research papers and looking at online like all the cell phone towers that we uh, like saw had uh, like angled sections Uh, or solid uh, metal sections uh, so our project uh, was to implement uh, a tubular section and see whether a tubular section would be more efficient and maybe we could reduce the cell phone tower from a four leg tower to a three leg tower and like we were uh, successful in implementing a small tower and like showing that uh, through analysis that like a tubular section uh, is more efficient when it comes to like material and cost savings and so th that was a, a very interesting project where, when i did at uh, svc and another uh, uh, interesting project uh, which was my actual final year project uh, me and a couple of uh, other classmates uh, we uh, like went to a company and they they gave us uh, like uh, training on how to build and design a steel warehouse so what we learned was using finite element softwares like how to design and analyze a structure and how to efficiently size structures so all those were very very interesting and like progressed me as an engineer throughout my career and like after svc like uh, i still wanted to learn more and more about engineering and civil engineering and like it was time to choose what kind of specialized specialization i'm going to do and where am i going to study it and all the all those things and at the time and i'm sure even it is now like uh, getting a like seat at a very prestigious institution for for doing a masters or a graduate level course in india is very very difficult so i looked uh, for the path outside of india and uh, that's when like uh, i got an opportunity to like uh, study masters uh, civil structural engineering at uh, university of florida here in uh, usa so selecting a course uh, specialization was uh, difficult i was uh, leaning uh, in between structural engineering and construction management two whole different things one which dealt mostly 
and more in depth with like the engineering and calculation aspects of things and the other more towards big picture project stuff like project planning scheduling estimating and all those things i was interested genuinely like in both the tracks and uh, as an engineer who's experienced like now i feel like choosing structural engineering uh, to study masters was a good was like as i am progressing throughout my career now i am also uh, learning and getting to do things a construction management professional would do as well like all the estimating and scheduling and budgeting i'm like look, like choosing structural engineering was a very good experience and university of florida like provided great research facilities excellent infrastructure and like knowledgeable and very friendly professors like my time at uf when it began like I moved to a different country, a uh, different culture, have to cook by myself. All those things was very challenging and managing a heavy, hard course load was very difficult for the initial semester. But I pulled through it, managed to get good grades and uh, happened to catch the eye of uh, the professor who's standing next to me. He's uh, Dr. David Privat uh, back in uh, or, uh, Gainesville, Florida. So he specializes in um, wind engineering. So like when I got introduced to him before that, as a civil engineer, my goals were to, okay, here is a structure, here are the loads, how am I going to design it? How is the structure going to withstand all of the loadings and et cetera, and that was it. But when I met this gentleman, he opened my eyes to different things, a different aspect of civil engineering, which is called giving back to the community. So here in the US, uh, and of course in India as well, there are a lot of natural calamities like tornadoes, flooding, hurricanes, all those. And what Dr. Privat dealt with was like uh, how tornadoes and hurricanes affect buildings and what can be done so that in the future, like we can at least salvage human life uh, when compared to the structures, of course, uh, when it comes to the natural calamities, because human safety at the foremost is the number one regard for a civil engineer. Like we can design buildings and beautiful buildings and beautiful bridges, but at the end of the day, if it is not safe for humans, uh, it's not a good uh, enough product. And that is what like uh, I love about civil engineering, where every day you get to design something and you're proud of it to say that, look, I've designed a safe structure. I've designed a nice looking structure, which would be useful for so many human beings for so many years and decades to come. And like having that, uh, practical or visual output of what I do every day that that gives great satisfaction um, like uh, as a civil engineer and uh, my time at UF like I had a lot of uh, opportunities to do research like I mentioned since I was working with this professor who's uh, in the wind uh, specialty like the University of Florida has a huge wind tunnel where you can model smaller scale, scaled size buildings and structures and you can blow the air through the wind tunnel and see how the wind interacts with the structure and what can be done to modify the structure so it can better withstand the wind so like all those were like mind blowing experiences and like pulled me to, towards civil engineering like utmost level like all those experiences like when when you think back as a, an experienced engineer after like five to seven years you think back at those small moments and those fundamentals going back to svc going back to university of florida all those small things you'll remember and those are things that help you progress in your day-to-day life and like uh my day-to-day -day life right now i'm uh, working as a civil structural engineer for uh, om engineering services so like my specialty is uh, structural engineering but i also do a lot of civil engineering like roadway design and uh, land development and one of the aspects of structural engineering that i love absolutely love about it is the varying complexities of each different structure you can take a small like a uh, like a gas station which you can design like it quickly and what sort of loads and what sort of resistance you need even th those gas stations will have whatever complexities and when you compare them to huge complex bridges like curved steel bridges or curved concrete bridges each of them has their own intricacies and like uh, the code requirements and like every day you get to learn something new and when you implement that and you make your product better you you feel proud as a civil engineer and like 
my day to day like life at uh, om engineering like uh, i do for the most part a lot of engineering calculations i run uh, 3d and finite element softwares and like pull pull out the results and uh, like see if it makes sense compare them to the code requirements and also help out in plans production like detailing of plans like drawing the building drawings the blueprints uh, the footing plans uh, especially all the reinforcement details i love i love doing all those like uh, like when you see on paper it'll be like uh, oh this is like six inches spacing for the reinforcement but when you come out to the side uh, you're like uh, that's hitting the concrete rein the concrete and you cannot have you need to have a minimum cover so all those things where you go back to your paper learning and your field work and your practical things uh, that's something like uh, as you progress as an engineer you get to learn day by day and how to apply your book knowledge to your practical world uh, daily uh, work experience and like uh, most of the curriculum that you learn at uh, say undergraduate level or in graduate level they don't deal with like complex uh, or a single structure bridge like they teach you how to design a small beam they teach you how to design a small column but uh, they don't teach you what a uh, global bridge loading how the vehicle movement uh, affects the bridges how the wind affects the bridges they give you the basic training of that but the overall bridging and uh, merging of all those components you have to learn day by day by yourself and that's something like i'm still learning i've learned some i'm still learning but uh, applying all those uh, fundamental knowledge i gained back at svc and during my masters that's that's very crucial so when when i look back at my time at svc like uh, when i was studying there i was like okay this these courses uh, seem okay these courses seem simple enough i i can get through it and now when i think of those those simple courses are the backbone to being a good civil engineer and as soon as you get your understanding and uh, you get a good uh, base of your knowledge in your undergraduate level that will help you progress throughout your career and uh, there's something called engineering judgment when it comes to construction and experience and stuff like that like when you when you compare a code requirement to a design that you're doing the code for the most part tries to cover uh, most of the aspects or most of the daily use structures that you see day to day but still the code does not cover every single type of structure out there and you will have to take some decisions based on your engineering knowledge based on your judgment based on field conditions and all those come with experience and that experience vital experience is what i'm gaining right now and i'm uh, on the on the go to achieving my goals uh, my goals uh, when i graduated from um, my masters uh, i wanted to get my certification as a professional engineer so professional engineer certification here in the us allows you to sign and seal uh, construction drawings so that's when signing and sealing construction drawings is basically you taking the responsibility saying like okay i have designed the structure i have made sure that the structure would withstand all the assigned loadings and it would be safe and sound to the public who are using them and also to the environment environment conscious is something that we need to be right now and civil engineering as a subject is there everywhere where you go like civil engineering like whatever you see you you travel on buses you travel on roads you stay in your house you go on a plane everything you like you need civil engineering and like as a field we are growing towards an environmentally conscious level and like you have all those green buildings and zero uh, net uh, zero carbon emission buildings all those and when it comes to like huge like structural projects like bridge projects we also try to use materials that are uh, environmental friendly and are efficient to produce and to like install as well so like learning all these nuances and evolving with the field day to day is something i love doing and uh, technological advancements in civil engineering as well has been uh, on the boom for the past 5 to 7 years it's been uh, extremely uh, huge 3d modeling and 3d visual visualization of reinforcement in structures all those things are amazing to learn and uh, to be a part of and you can someday like drive on the road and say oh yeah i constructed 
I helped construct, I helped design that bridge. And that's something that you will feel immensely proud about. I, and I'm not sure that I would have gotten that satisfaction of, if I had been a computer engineer or an electrical engineer. And I'm proud, immensely proud to be a civil engineer. And I'm learning uh, every day as I go. My next goal is to start signing and sealing documents. Uh, I have the qualifications now, but it's a mental state taking that responsibility. I think I'm ready to take that responsibility and then start giving back to the community. And that's something that as all civil engineers, we can be proud of. It's been uh, like nice sharing my thoughts and experiences to you guys today. And I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity provided by SPC. And to all the students listening out there, like civil engineering is something that if you like love all those calculations, physics, maths, like this field would blow your mind. Like at first you'll think like, okay, yeah, it's just buildings, but the details and uh, the nuances and the codes, it's all so interesting and it will keep you hooked to the entire life. And with that note, uh, I'd like to thank uh, SVC for, for providing this opportunity for me and uh, all the best for all the students out there. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Arvind. So it was a very uh, wonderful uh, talk. So you had covered all the uh, experience that you had gained. And also you uh, told that the responsibility that we have to for the society. So that was a good point again. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you for joining, Arvind. So next on the agenda, we have uh, Civilization to Civil Engineering, an insight to opportunities and achievements. The talk by Mr. Nagesh uh, Puttaswamy, Zonal Head South, White Topping and RMD Ultra Tech Cement Limited. So I would like to uh, give a brief intro about him. So it's a great pleasure to introduce him to you. So he has 34 years experience in civil engineering and construction uh, in design of RC and steel structures. And he has also designed greenhouses. He has been a trainer for skill development for masons, students, contractors, and engineers, and also trainer for uh, presentation skills, techniques, concrete mix pro uh, proportion courses. And uh, also, he's a serious photographer shooting crocodiles in wild corn croc. And he has been um, very interested in studying about the uh, crocodiles also. I welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you for joining the session. You may please uh, take over the session now. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Hope I'm uh, audible. I had done a sound check, but still I would like to get a confirmation I'm audible there. Yes, sir. You're audible. OK. Then I will uh, share my screen now. Yes, sir. OK. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my good friends at uh, SVCE and uh, many of the young uh, engineer, uh, engineers who have joined here to share their experience or to get a little bit more about uh, civil engineering. And a special uh, hello, good morning, and uh, welcome to this presentation for the young students who are aspiring to be engineers. Uh, Many of you might be thinking, what is this civilization is all about? Are we into a, a history class or something? But uh, what I'm talking to you about how civil engineering has evolved and has been in uh, the forefront of uh, human life uh, over a period of uh, thousands of years. Uh, let us get on. Uh, first thing that I have to tell you what your history teacher said. Civilization tell us about the prosperity of the humankind of that time. But uh, most of us, uh, uh, middle-aged and elder age, who are not very interested in knowing all these things, the first question I will ask is, how are civilization recognized? And the younger lot will say, it is a past. What do I gain? What do I learn from them? The answer is, very simple. Most of you, especially the students who are now aspiring to become engineers or uh, joining an engineering sorry, college. 
all of you remember if we talk about any civilization today what is what comes in front of your uh, eyes i'll take you through some of them well uh, uh, to make things simple uh, what i have done is i have taken civilizations yes, so uh, thousands of years uh, back right from the american continent to the asian continent uh, i do not know not many of us uh, know about this uh, mayan uh, uh, civilization this happened somewhere uh, in the middle thin portion between the north american and the south american continent uh, i was uh, reading a lot about uh, the migration and the problems of amazon river which has uh, uh, created a lot of havoc always has been uh, creating havoc and these days you know that a uh, lot of sir, floods are appearing here also so how they have tackled sir anything else yeah uh, are you sharing the screen sir it's not yes it's not visible so yeah. i have no so we are not able to see the screen uh one minute now i hope yes, administratively sir. i am not yeah i i am now seeing that uh, my screen is being seen there yes sir yes sir okay uh now it is full screen right yes sir Hello? okay uh the first civilization uh, i would like to talk to you about is the uh mesoamerican civilization or the mayan mayan civilization this prospered between the that thin strip of land between north america and south america spread over three countries uh they were in existence somewhere in 8000 bc to 2000 bc but uh, the extent of this civilization has come into picture very very recently and uh, still a lot of things are going on and what we see here is a similar type of architecture that looks like a pyramid but very wonderful thing that uh, i am reading about it i will frankly tell you i'm still reading about this civilization and the architecture and uh, the buildings of these civilization they were typically assembled rocks uh, getting into uh, pyramids but very wonderfully oriented in such a way that people can study the celestial moment so uh, they are very geometrically true and large perforated summit because you please uh, we have to look out here is the climatic condition is hot and humid there very near to the equator so because of which uh, hot and humid they had a ventilation system and there were small small columns which held these opening and uh, there were a lot of op uh, ornamental work and very important to note here is 7000 bc they knew how to polish their stones so the key takeaway here is massive pyramidical construction and uh, what we should appreciate is linking to the celestial movement and this happened in somewhere in 7000 years 8000 years before bc somewhere around that time or a little bit later than that we had our own civilization uh, indus valley and a uh, lot is being talked about this civilization here and as civil engineers or as engineering community what we have to appreciate here is the way things were planned for a better living uh, we had roads we had buildings we had water storage facilities and very important we had a very good drainage system and there were baths public baths that were available that means you can see that the buildings were answering the necessity of human beings in both the cases and then uh roman empire we have been bombarded with this uh, 
civilization a lot in our textbooks uh, over a period of time, but uh, most of us know uh, this has always been amalgamated with the Greek architecture or the Greek civilization and the Roman civilization. But as an engineer, as a civil engineer, what I would take away from here is the first structural system coming into place. There were vertical members, there were horizontal members, there were arches, there were olds, and very important, they knew how to make their roads durable. What you see up here is a road which is paved with blocks of concrete or the hardened volcanic ash that was abundantly available in Rome. And uh, that is how uh, things were there. And they had this beautiful uh, material. They were new, something similar to concrete of these days. In fact, uh, very recently, I was able to guide a PhD uh, taking a clue from the Roman architecture and the Roman concrete chemistry. Uh, the puzzlonic materials, what you call as fly ash or slag in cement these days, were there in the Roman era about uh, 1000 to 300 BC. They were already using that. And massive, again, the massive construction, the plums, the requirement of columns, portal system, and very important, they had known what is a theater as a building, what is a stadium as a building. And then when you come to towards uh, uh, the Far East, you have the Angor civilization. Again, a uh, lot of uh, similarities between what the architecture that you find in majority of the places of uh, Tamil Nadu. And there are historical links that many of our own kings had gone there, established temples. But this is also massive. And uh, China is always uh, a open but a closed book not much is revealed there's a lot of things and uh, the science behind chinese architecture is very well documented and one wonderful thing that i always ob observe and uh, admire about chinese uh, buildings is right before christ they knew how to make buildings for ex re resisting explosions you know china invented gunpowder so because of that, there were uh, things, but uh, these are things that tell us something evolved, some importance of a community there. But what told this story is the buildings of that era. There was an university degree or there was not an university degree for the people who built this, designed this, conceptualized this. But they all knew some basic science to hold things together to make what things are. Most of you in Tamil Nadu would have visited the Tanjavur temple. And uh, I do not know how many of you appreciate the fact that any part of the day, the main Gopuram there will never cast a shadow. Will never cast a shadow. That means. It's a huge mathematical calculations that have gone hundreds and hundreds of years ago into construction of buildings. Was there an university giving you a bachelor's degree in engineering? I don't know. I don't know, but still, there were. And uh, when I was designing a few temples during my consultancy days, I had an opportunity to interact with uh, someone who knew the Vastu Shastra very well. When I say Vastu Shastra, it is not the commercial Vastu Shastra, the Vastu Shastra of temples and buildings. He used to recite Sanskrit shlokas or slash Sanskrit verses and explain them how the calculations go about. And uh, that was wonderful. So, what I would say here is number one, civil engineering has evolved over time, and every time it has evolved, what I would say is it has answered the necessity of human beings directly. No question of my computer program wanting a computer to tell human beings what I am doing or what I am capable of doing. When I build a building, my client or the human being who comes and lives there, he directly experiences what I built. He doesn't want another translating medium to tell. 
So uh, right from uh, the Mayan architecture, you have got the uh, Egyptian, you got the Roman, and then in the modern context, 1793 starts uh, the science of construction when cement started getting into the construction field. And then uh, what, as an engineer, uh, many of you people would like to know would be 1836 is the year when Germany started systematic study of strength uh, and other properties of cement and started uh, looking at how evolution. Let us, we agree, and we always agree this, necessity is the mother of invention. No doubt, we have to think differently and combine the information we have. That means that is where engineering community as a whole, not just civil engineers, engineering community as a whole has started answering the necessities of human beings and made life of human beings a better place or better thing to experience. So I will quote a couple of examples uh, here. Number one, challenging of reaching Arabian Sea from the European subcontinent. Many of you who have studied history know that most of the Europeans came around the Cape of uh, Good Hope uh, or the Cape Town in uh, South Africa, going all the way around uh, the African continent and then come to India, which was the source for spices and many of the other things that Europeans took from us. What some engineering thought came was there is the Gulf or uh, the Gulf of, of Middle East, what we call, uh, which is connected to Arabian Sea. And there is a there was a very small piece of land between the Mediterranean Sea and this Gulf. So there was a process that was thought about why not have a canal here so that we allow the ships to pass through this canal and connect Mediterranean Sea, thereby I avoid ships traveling all across time plus fuel plus uh, the risks, everything. So now most of the ships will go through here. Not only the ships from India, many of the Far Eastern ships also take this route. Well, it is not just, this is the small piece of land. This was how it was cut out into a Suez Canal. Uh, about 130 and 193 kilometers of uh, waterway uh, called the Suez Canal was uh, constructed, and the construction began in 25 September 1859 and uh, completed in somewhere in uh, 1869. But uh, the order of the day that I read in many many books is uh, several lakh trillion dollars of uh, money has been saved and if something happens in Suez Canal the loss that the world experience is of the order of trillions of dollars today very recently most of us know what happened when a carry, um, uh, container got uh, struck in Suez Canal the world was in haywire there were ships all along uh, Mediterranean Sea the Pacific Ocean the Arabian Sea struck waiting to pass through uh, Suez Canal. So that is something that you all should think that is what you, we as civil engineers can answer, can answer for hundreds of years, 18th century to what we are in 22nd century. One more thing came up and this was more channel challenging than uh, uh, the Suez Canal, uh, even though it's slightly older than Suez Canal, it is the Panama Canal. The, it is a small strip of water that uh, has been artificially uh, splitting the South and North American continent. Uh, it is called the Panama Canal, but the, the cha more challenge here is the difference in level between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean on the other side. So the ship not only crosses the sea, but they elevate themselves in water. I will not give you details here, both uh, 
uh, the engineers who are into halfway into their studies and uh, the uh, young uh, students who are aspiring to become engineers, please uh, Google for Panama Canal, see the details of this canal, how ships are allowed into a chamber, water level is uh, increased so that the ship floats to a higher level, then ship goes into the next level. It's a very wonderful science that engineers have made. And it's only 82 kilometers, about 51 miles. And uh, somewhere in 1904, um, the construction began. But it took a long time because there were uh, some issues of uh, rights as well as uh, the local problems. So the construction had stopped. The second agency started. There's a lot of history that you can look out. And the construction also has answered several things. Cold. This is uh, a typical detail of uh, Tibetan architecture. Again, not much known. Uh, I had an opportunity to study this architecture because uh, uh, I was on the jury committee, which awarded one of one such architecture buildings in. Uh, uh, near Mysore to be as the best construction. So there I went through and discussed with the monks how the whole construction, why and all these things. What I realized was this peculiar kind of hollow construction with an insulating material evolved in Tibet again about a thousand years ago or a little more than thousand years ago when Tibetan uh, uh, monasteries and these things were being built. It had an outer clay wall. It had an inner clay, uh, aerated clay wall. In between, they had insulating material. And there was a hollow thing where this insulating material is put in. So this ensured that a simple physics that we studied in our high school, every different medium dissipates heat or prevents the heat being transferred 100% to the other side. So you have one two and three medium. So the cold temperature outside did not get inside. The warmer environment inside, we did not allow the heat. This wall did not allow the heat to go outside. So that is something, again, from China, I have got this wonderful technology, build up the masses. There are some, uh, but wonderful thing about this, even though the purpose is same, the length, all along the length of this uh, wall, the construction methodology has changed. In some places, there are two huge walls in between. Uh, soil is filled and rammed. In some cases, it is boulders. In some cases, it is the wall itself is so huge. But the basic thing is this wall was constructed, number one, to prevent invasion. Number two, both Mongolia and China were very good in using explosives. They wanted this wall. Uh, resist uh, explosion or an attack using explosion. That's how things are there. You can see here somewhere we have got uh, rubble, somewhere we have got soil, and they made sure that there is a pathway. This is uh, over uh, 1,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, so you have to use some way of communication over that. So there were there, there were watchtowers. And coming to the modern era, civil engineering has been inspired by many things. As I told you, the planning system came in from Indus Valley, the road planning system. They were the people who told uh, the world that roads have in a community should be planned. We had uh, roads that were straight. We had the intersection of roads that were at 90 degrees to each other. Coming back to Rome, they had a concentric road system with a radial road system. So. Uh, each one, uh, you might have heard um, the proverb, all roads lead to Rome. It is not that uh, one, the attraction of the civilization, the, the concentric road system. When you start walking in a road in a particular direction, you would reach center of Rome. So that is how the proverb came. So now all of you know this. All of you know this. There are traffic jams all across the world. But... Uh, an engineer, especially a civil engineer, came out with a solution of what is called as a cloverleaf connection or a flyover. When it is 
less complicated a simple flyover part of the traffic taking over a bridge and reaching the other side so that the congestion in the center takes away but the clover leaf came in when there was no necessity of any traffic signal i am going from any road to any road in that junction i can follow the right kind of the clover uh, uh, segment and move and join my traffic for my further journey whether i have to take a right turn left turn go straight everything is possible no signals you can i think uh, uh, there are quite a few clover connections uh, uh, across tamil nadu because i have observed uh, whenever i am traveling across from bangalore to chennai and all these places especially where you cross the national highway you have got this clover connection you can have a feel of it how does it feel what uh, then you can imagine with so much of traffic on the national highway what would have been if there were to be a red orange and green light asking every one of you to stop except the one directed traffic it is unimaginable so when you are getting into civil engineering your career could be any one of these number one you could be a creator of a building of a system or a facility or uh, an entertainment center or anything you can also work with recycle i heard the young uh, engineer who spoke to just before me was talking about sustainability and all these things there are so many things today uh, i will tell you the order of the day especially for people who are in the engineering college now and people who are getting into engineering college you will have to work on recycling everything that human beings have created as a part of improvement of science whether it is plastic or uh, our microprocessor boards or even our buildings and buildings i am telling you it is not something of tomorrow we are already doing it uh, in delhi in mumbai few part and rest of the world it is well known recycled aggregates recycled sand recycled i mean the sand and the stones are extracted back from the buildings that are taken out but when all these things are being built and uh, as i told you the human beings directly feel what civil engineer delivers for the society directly feel and we should also remember a civil engineer created something something goes wrong the same people are directly the sufferers a building collapses people under it are at high risk or under high risk no question of having an intermediate person to transfer the risk no so these all these things needs control quality control management control so you can be a controlling authority as again uh, my previous speaker was telling project management yes this is where things are controlled to ensure that various agencies get in so another big challenge at least in the third world countries and very recently i was reading an article uh, uh, from american uh, seemed that this is also a problem there in america also so there are complex situations where you can work on culture money economic all these things will come out based on other things there is when it comes to housing urban requirement is different rural requirement is different so you have a various opportunities coming home why again this is something that i always use when i talk about housing with the engineering college students but uh, today i uh, i mean i took this out from another presentation and added it here to make a feel of the students to know see uh, number one this is a home for many and this is a home the kid getting ready to school there when she finishes her class in the evening she says i am going home this lady after her work she says i am going home the person in the car before leaving the office says i am going home 
So, foam is a relatively complex system. And this is where we as civil engineers has got a lot to do. And this is where when you achieve even a small thing from your kitty as an engineer, you will be thrilled. Well, these are the things that is happening. I will tell you, most of you young uh, engineers now aspiring, you are very strong in your technology. You know how to handle technology. But this enthusiasm, this entertainment tool in your hand can and should become the solution provider for this. Millions of houses still required, cost effective and complex demands, safety, technologically, as well as uh, uh, taking up adversities, fast deliverables. It is humanly impossible for a human being to work out on a piece of paper. You need technology here. You need technology here to help me out with various inputs. So all these things, again, there are, there are chances uh, that you are, are getting in. And uh, being a civil engineer, I am uh, inclined to computers. So you do have a chance to develop softwares, to be a part of system that is developing software, to do all these things in civil engineering. And very importantly, uh, I would say, if people are interested in management, interested in management mba in some part of your mind please uh, complete your civil engineering go for an mba there is a huge huge demand for mbas with basic civil engineering uh, degrees because many many construction companies in india and abroad uh, of course in india it is more abroad it is much lesser they want i mean they are the mba level positions in those construction companies, developer companies are being held by mechanical engineers, electrical engineers with uh, MBA rather than a civil engineer. And there is always a communication gap between the administrative decision and the site problem. So civil engineering and co combined with an MBA is the necessity of uh, uh, this thing. When I said uh, a very small gesture, See, this is a house that was developed by uh, Ultratech Cement. Uh, this is only a 250 square feet, one BHK house. This is something that we developed when uh, somewhere in 2012, uh, when there was a huge flood, North, northern part of Karnataka was washed out, literally unexpected uh, uh, floods. Uh, we had to rehabilitate them, and these floods came in an odd time. We had to rehabilitate them in a very short duration for the regular monsoon to be handled. This is something that we developed, 250 square feet house, uh, which we could not prevent water submerging this uh, building. But we can always make this building strong enough to be stable even after water submerges it, water gets away, and this house is safe. That is how we developed this. Uh, fully concrete and one single pour, believe it or not, it is completed in one week. Monday, I start the work at this level, foundation. Next Monday, you will have the housewarming. You will have the housewarming. When we said about this technology to government of Karnataka, they laughed. They laughed. and. The, it was challenged. They gave us a site, very remote place. We did some exercise of uh, taking concrete to this site. This was the first house that we built in one week. And the housing minister then in Karnataka himself landed up at site to inaugurate the building. And after this, uh, I am proud to say we have built more than 10,000 units now. And now, looking at the stability of this, uh, you are hearing about the landslides. Uh, the coffee land of Karnataka had a similar situation three years ago. Uh, houses were washed out. We, in consultation with the geotechnical engineering, we built these houses 
using the same technology monolithic construction we call this technology rmd rapid monolithic disaster proof construction these buildings were uh, constructed uh, between 2019 and 2020 and uh, we handed over we have already handed over more than 700 houses another uh, 700 houses are almost ready uh, even during the pandemic we were able to deliver these houses and uh, the feedback of these people is they they are feeling more secured they are feeling more secured all the things that they can they lose in they could lose if the foundation doesn't give away or the soil below the foundation doesn't give away they could lose the windows and doors of that uh, building the building will be intact that is what uh, what a civil engineer can handle then the speed you know monolithic you know about precast these buildings are built uh, in the half in the factory or 75 percent in the factory 25 percent in the site this is uh, walls roofs built in factory then come assemble in the construction but what is now again one step ahead is i will cast rooms in the factory transport those rooms and then assemble those rooms into a building or a house that is the technology and i'm not talking about europe i'm not talking about america i'm talking about what is happening in india if somebody visits goa you can see if somebody visits um, mumbai there is one building that uh, um, is actually uh, built by a totally indian company um, this is uh, something that things are going now one word of advice that i would like to give uh, with de de decades of experience behind me going up and down starting on my own uh, right from day one i started my own consultancy and uh, believe it or not 21 years into my life of uh, civil engineer i joined ultratech for a specific purpose so what is there first of all uh, before starting any profession not just engineering course please think relax think a bit along with your parents number one am i looking for a job or am i looking for a career this is something that you have to understand job is something you pick out anything out of the list and go there and start doing what they want you to do but when you think of a career please remember you wish you should be the one where the employer searches for a character like you or a qualification like you this is what is called a career and a job then what you do will be something that you would enjoy the most another thing that you would like to do always is again a diversification this is something that uh, i would like to say because i have designed uh, three uh, specialized uh, greenhouses to grow flowers uh, uh, bangalore is a hub for exporting flowers uh, i had an opportunity to design few of them so civil engineers can make the life of farmers easy can change zero pest zero communicable diseases in plant overcome climatic uncertainties and i can create an environment that my pro plant needs maximize production because there are no losses then no operation loss so less water used less chemicals on plant this is the order of the day and it can grow roses it can grow vegetables it can grow greens it can grow fruits also what you see here is a pomegranate plant inside the greenhouse there are several challenges uh, i would suggest that you people just google for them uh, well with that uh, i would say that when i look for a job i will start earning i have to work i have to do something to get my salary at the end of the month what happens from my first day of work to the last day of work, I'll be doing the same thing. I draw the salary, start working the next day. I draw the salary, start working the same day. I do not know many times, I do may not know what I am doing. 
but when i am thinking about a career i will try to be what i want to be i know where i can reach i like the way i have to live simple when i join a job thinking of a career i know what will what will i be in 5 years what will i be in the 15th year what i can be in the 20th year and so on and so forth so uh, that is uh, something that uh, all of you especially the younger lot who are getting into trying to get into an engineering course please think over take the right choice and uh, very important i would say that uh, civil engineering is probably the first engineering ever evolved and without the support of civil engineering no other engineering can evolve no other engineering can evolve we are into water supply we are into dams we are into uh, canals we are into electricity we are into yes my previous speaker was talking about uh, uh, electric towers transmission towers uh, mobile towers come on tell me where we are not there in fact on a joking uh, uh, way many times uh, not to hurt anybody's sentiments i repeat not to hurt anybody's sentence sentiment in hindu mythology we always uh, talk about ganesha's um, uh, importance as the first deity to be worshiped would we do a good thing or a bad thing the first puja we is always offered to a ganesha so i always joke around saying that we are the ganeshas of engineering community so along with that another tip that i want to uh, come across formal education gives you the most of the foundation that is required that is knowledge along with that with your uh, inclination with your enthusiasm you have to learn how to use this knowledge in a different way uh, in four years the entire life cannot be taught by any institutions please note that you have to start developing your own skill set uh, very easy whenever something is taught to yourself always ask why how where and when if something is taught in the class why is it taught to me where i can use it how i can use it when i can use it that is something called as a skill set it can be done by observation it can be done by co curricular activities again my previous speaker was very well talking about the mini projects that he did and passion until you are passionate about what you are learning what you are uh, uh, trying to do uh, nothing can be measured in terms of success and passion or uh, happiness patience is very important again i'll tell you for all of you there is a, a story there is a youtube video on the bamboo tree the bamboo tree and career that is what you have to google for you will know how bamboo is so strong so tall and so unique please watch that video and civil engineering can also be glamorous please don't think that it, oh what is this again the same bricks the same mud the same gray concrete no what makes something glamorous being different being attractive doing something that others dare to do movie star model what is it to become a movie star don't think it is so easy first of all you should be confident and you should take that risk of stopping everything in your life and attempt to become a movie star you are not very sure whether i'll be successful whether i'll be accepted by people or not but you need that gut so that is something behind glamorous things sustainability life some materials are very vital now if i go on digging for granite what do i do some day granite vanishes marble vanishes what do i do afterwards marble and granite cannot be recycled for another building no it will die out now wood cannot be diverse so what we are doing now is there are a lot of materials 
that have come in. See, these are concretes, not stones. These are concretes that are made. They are cut, made in site in situ, just like a rubber stamp is placed on your uh, certificate. Put, put, put the postman uh, putting the seal. So that is how these concretes are made. This is polished, and most of you, including many civil engineers, will confuse this to be a natural stone. No, these are polished granite uh, concrete that make even granite shy away from themselves. I can engrave my pictures on concrete. That is how. That is the things are that is going on, and all the things that you see here. The safe in the house, the stool, the workbench, all made of concrete. Thanks to Nuon Studio, one of my very close friends. I am proud to say he is not even a science graduate. He is a BCom plus an MBA. He is loud to his concrete. He is more than he is loud to his wife and daughter. I just spoke to him. I told him that I am going to use some of his product. And I am happy to be involved in all the concretes that you have. He has developed, uh, and these are the materials. What you can see here is a concrete, unreinforced concrete, unreinforced concrete. These are very specialized concretes that we are developing. All these things are concrete. Believe it or not, this is a regular ballpoint pen made of concrete with a concrete stand, and these bottles and the. uh film roll that you see again are not original bottle nor the these are actually the concrete uh, replica of the products the wash basins you can see here what all we can do it looks like stone and these are done in bangalore all these products are done in bangalore right under my supervision is and uh, this gold emblem that you see is also made out of concrete that is uh, something that uh, you can look out for make your wall feel three dimensional your signature these are the chairs if somebody visits mantri mall in uh, bangalore you can see you can sit on these chairs you can spend some time on these chairs find that is uh, there and this is the concrete that we are using in that it has got some complex uh, combinations of uh, fibers cement cementitious admixture and uh, pigments all these things and uh, it's a very expensive concrete no doubt very expensive concrete uh, civil engineering has always been answering the necessities of human beings be it hospitals until you go and build a shell there hospital cannot move in school no computer centers without civil engineer nothing can happen sophisticated factories stadiums and sports complex space launch facilities all need somebody called brick and mortar who is the face of a civil engineer and i would proudly and i have been always saying uh, without click of the brick there can never be a click of the button and this is the concrete that i showed you all those uh, wash basins furniture chairs that is the concrete you can see that's my pair of hands doing that that is concrete that is concrete so knowledge and civil engineering and oceans they live forever thank you thank you all for uh, joining this presentation and a big namaskar to all of you and if anybody wants to get in touch with me i am available on all these things uh, quickly i'll uh, hand over the session back to the moderator there thank you very much thank you very much sir it was a very informative and interesting lecture i'm sure that this will inspire all the civil engineering aspirants and the undergraduate students now so you have basically covered uh, everything anyone would uh, anyone should know about civil engineering so from the uh, earlier civilization to how it has been developed and hello yeah you're able to hear me sir
yes so from the earlier civilization to the current uh, uh, technologies so everything has been covered by you so all the civil engineering is and the importance of civil engineering uh, you have talked about that and uh, very interesting that at finally you have touched upon the innovations and the innovative concrete that you and your friend have done it so it was a very good lecture uh, thank you so Hope much i'm audible yeah oh there is thank something you. something wrong with my set of speakers they had uh, come to an auto off position yeah oh yes sir thank you once again sir for this uh, lecture and giving your uh, special time for us thank you so much thank you so next up in the agenda is a talk on career in civil engineering so um I am Ruby Freya, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering. So I am going to talk about the career in uh, civil engineering. So most of the uh, points have been uh, covered by uh, both the speakers, the alumni, and most of it has been covered by uh, Mr. Nagesh also. So we'll be just uh, looking into more uh, briefly. I'll just share my screen. So I'll be covering upon what is civil engineering, the different subdivisions and the scope of B civil engineering and what would be the career opportunities after B civil engineering. So generally engineers create what has never been and so engineering is the application of uh, science. So these are a few famous uh, quotes about engineering as such. So why, what is civil engineering and why we have to learn uh, civil engineering? So anything uh, that you can imagine of, so an engineer, as a civil engineer, you can imagine things, you can bring it into realization, you can implement it and, you know, you can bring it into reality. So that is possible by us. So we can create a lot of uh, things. So as uh, the previous speaker also said, civil engineering is the oldest branch and the uh, root of all the engineering. So initially there were only military and civil engineering. So civil engineering dealt with anything that the civilians uh, required, right? So anything from the uh, roads, bridges, water, water supply, so everything is covered under civil engineering. So generally when uh, we say civil engineer, we think about uh, buildings, construction, right? So I'm just showing you a few uh, marvelous infrastructure projects especially I'm showing uh, examples only from India. So these are few uh, examples, Lotus Temple in Delhi, the Bandra Valley ceiling. So it is not that only in a uh, worldwide international level, we have a lot of marvelous structures. So in India, we have many, many structures like that. So you can see this underwater metro tunnel at Kolkata, this very huge steel structure, Statue of Unity. Uh, Chenab Bridge, which is very highest um, rail bridge, and this Bogibil Bridge, which is Asia's second longest rail come road bridge. So there are so many infrastructure projects. Here you can see the nine kilometer uh, length Atal Tunnel. And the latest, uh, even more current topics that we can see here, this is a six lane road, which is located at Surat Hazira industrial area, which is made of steel slag. So we are going into eco-friendly uh, materials to build roads. And this is India's first 3D printed house, which is built at IIT Madras. So a lot of digitalization also has come into picture in uh, civil engineering. So what civil engineers uh, generally do, we, are, we take care of the built environment, which is uh, planning, architecture, design, construction, uh, maintenance of infrastructure projects is taken care. And the natural env environment also has to be taken care by the civil engineer. So using of uh, uh, renewable sources of energy and 
to take care of the agriculture irrigation part right and the other aspect is the people so what is required a shelter water safety right so all that is also uh, taken care we have to have a res be responsible for the sustainable development of the uh, society also so sustainability means we have to take care we have to make sure that all these sources of this uh, environment is there for the future generations also. So civil engineering is not just buildings, just construction. So there are a lot of subdivisions here. So I'm just showing a few examples of where uh, you can see the role of a civil engineer. So construction engineer, uh, how things are built and how it is managed so it requires communication skills where you have to deal with people also. Structural engineer, um, we need to design, find the dimensions of the uh, elements of the building, like right? calculation, maths, physics is involved here. So we also do computer uh, use a uh, computer for the analysis. Geotechnical engineering, where we uh, have to deal with the soil properties because safety of the building is important the foundation is very much uh, important so based on the uh, soil strata we have to uh, design such a good uh, foundation it also deals with the uh, retaining walls so you can see all such um, structures on hilly regions right so you need to hold up all the soil so all this is included in civil engineering the next subdivision is water resource engineering, where uh, we talk about the fluid mechanics, how a hydroelectric power generation can be uh, created. Also, the basics of irrigation engineering, the different types of irrigation. And in environmental engineering, we talk about the uh, water treatment, wastewater treatment, uh, how to design these water treatment plants that you can see in the middle of the uh, slide, the middle picture. And we talk about the construction of green buildings. So how eco-friendly our environment can be made, uh, making uh, less usage of the electricity. And transportation engineering will deal with the construction of roadways, airways, and the uh, rail, uh, railways, right? So harbors. So all the transportation, uh, modes of transportation, uh, the civil engineer has a big role and the remote sensing here uh, what we do is uh, using the satellite images the sensors we are able to so we are able to uh, figure out where we have vegetation where we have a water resource underground so all this can be done and um, in the current technology after digi digitalization has come into picture we are able to even locate where this uh, road, is, the, you know, the upcoming project is going to come up. So all that can be visualized. So all this remote sensing is required. Construction man management is the overall management uh, of the entire project, any project that is being done. So from the uh, labor, from the money that is involved, the engineers that they are involved, uh, safety, everything is covered under this construction management. So what you actually study in uh, BE civil engineering as such. So we have seen what are the different uh, uh, disciplines and what, uh, how a civil engineer can play a role in this society. So what is studied in this BE civil engineering? So all these subdivision subjects, right? So all the basics of those subjects will be dealt in this curriculum. In addition to that, we will have uh, communication skills that will be uh, taught basic maths is required and basic phys uh, sciences are uh, obviously required so this will be covered in a civil engineering degree program so the curriculum or the subjects that will be studied will be grouped like this and in uh, spc we have curriculum which relates also the uh, emerging technologies also so we will have uh, some subjects which deals with the current technologies and we also involve industry people to um, deliver topics on that. So the main uh, topic for this presentation, which is the career after VE civil engineering. 
so once you uh, complete this BE degree, what are the scopes after that? Right. So my buildings will be my legacy. They will speak for me long after I'm go gone. So it is a very uh, interesting uh, quote, obviously. So these are the different opportunities that you have. You can go for any job, internships at first, and then continue as job. You can also do management studies like the previous speaker said. Right? You can do an MBA or you can do this master's in construction management, uh, which is a great uh, deal and it gives you a lot of uh, exposure. You can also do higher studies, uh, that is uh, MS or ME, MTech. You can do that within India or outside India, obviously. And then there are a lot, many, many opportunities out there in the government sectors. So you need to write competitive exams for that and you can uh, get through these and you can get a well settled government job. You can also choose to be an entrepreneur or a consultant. So you can have your own firm, a construction firm or a consultancy firm where you can just do your structural drawing and give to the engineer. So all these are there. So there are a lot of opportunities uh, for the BE civil engineering students. So what kind of jobs uh, am I talking about? So you can be uh, interior design designer, a private sector job you can go for. It can be just, you know, computer aided drawing. Uh, that is the CAD engineer or draftsman. Uh, initially, for an experienced people generally join as the site engineer where you get to know all the difficulties in the site and you will get a practical exposure of what's happening in any project. You can also go as a valuer, um, a safety engineer, a real estate um, firm you can join, right? And there are a lot of infrastructure projects going on, which is taken over by private uh, companies as well as from the government. So you can join in any of those. And the additional opportunities as a job, it can be you can uh, take up teaching or it, you can also go as a researcher or a scientist. So again, for higher studies, also you have a lot of different uh, streams that you can go for, whatever subdivisions we had seen. So in any of those subdivisions, you can uh, master yourself. So BE Civil Engineering four-year course is just, you know, basics of all the subdivisions. So you know, every, you know about everything. When you want to master something, you go for these masters and you can specialize yourselves and uh, work on work after that. So other than uh, other than MS or ME, MTech programs, you also have uh, PhD programs. There are a lot of certificate courses and PG diploma courses, which will add on to your uh, BE degree. Government jobs, which I would like to stress upon, where you have a lot of opportunities. You can see the uh, upcoming or the currently going infrastructure projects in India. So I'm just um, focusing on what is happening in India. You can see a lot of projects. And if you are very uh, keenly listening to the news and all the budget uh, um, allotments, you can see so many thousands of crores are being uh, spent on infrastructure projects. So you, there are a lot of opportunities for civil engineers, especially uh, to work on such projects. And for this, you just have to uh, prepare for the government uh, competitive exams. Okay. So engineering service exams, where it is going to be only whatever you have studied in BE civil engineering, those topics are going to be covered. In addition to that, current affairs or the basic sciences would be covered. So once if you are dedicated in your B civil engineering course itself, it is it will be easy for you to uh, crack the competitive exams as well. So there are a lot of uh, sectors under these government where you can uh, see yourself getting placed. Okay. So one important thing that so these are the different sectors under government uh, jobs that you can look for, and you also have. Other than the direct government jobs, you can also go for public sector undertakings, PSUs like uh, ONGC, SAIL, Bell. Right? There are a lot of companies uh, where you can uh, see yourself after this B civil engineering. 
So one of this, uh, I just wanted to show that from the uh, Tamil Nadu government, this uh, from TNPSC, you have this very current uh, job opening that was there. You can see there are so many number of vacancies uh, for civil engineer especially. So uh, this I just wanted to show you that most of the uh, posts here they had asked for this civil engineering qualification only. So you can see the number of vacancies or so how much scope is there. And it is not that very tough to uh, crack these. So by the end of the final year, you will be able to uh, clear these papers, uh, this exam also. Right. And also Tamil Nadu government, I have just given this uh, web link, the employment exchange link where you can register now itself and you can keep upgrading, uh, updating the your profile as you complete the degree where again you will be called for such government jobs whenever there are vacancies so the final thing is you can uh, like i said you can go as an entrepreneur or consultant so you can be a builder or a developer a contractor right you can be a surveyor you can be a valuer you know that people uh, go for home loans so valuers are called to value uh, to uh, do the valuation of a building so all that also can be done by you so it is uh, your future you need to build the right future so you need to look out for all the uh, scopes and then you have to choose the uh, right opportunity so thank you very much and i thank our hod to give me this opportunity to talk on this uh, topic so you can also see our uh, web page link and our uh, YouTube link here. You can go through this. Thank you. So next in agenda, we have uh, final year students to talk about the campus life at SVC. So first we have Ms. Uh, G. Darshini who is our final year student and she has done even uh, paid internships in uh, CMRL. Uh, she is a very meritorious student. She has been awarded the Outstanding Civil Engineering Student Award for 21-22. And she has also been awarded the Budding Bright Engineer Award in her first year. Uh, she has done a lot of uh, mini projects and she has been involved in the association activities also in the uh, department. She has done a lot of certification courses, which are additional to this um, main curriculum. So yes, uh, I welcome Dashini to take over the session now. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, I'm very delighted to be here and I'm grateful for the opportunity to address you all. It seems only like yesterday when I started college here, but the four years have already passed by. And these are the four golden uh, years of my life. So it is a great honor to share my golden experiences with you all. First, when I started, I felt the campus and staff to be very uh, warm and welcoming. They made it easier to slip into the engineering world and its many faces. The campus itself is very peaceful and provides a perfect environment for students. The infrastructure and student facilities here are the best. And one of the many student spaces, the open air theater and the other sports are uh, perfect places to socialize and to get to know each other and make friends. Personally, I got acquainted with a lot of people while being involved in organizations like the Indian Concrete Institute, the Institution of Engineers as a junior executive member and taking part in events like Artifacts, which is a national level technical symposium conducted by our department every year. It presents us with endless opportunities. I had the opportunity to serve as a graphic designer in this event, which is a skill I have greatly honed, especially during Artifacts. It is also a great platform to get acquainted with seniors and a lot uh, you can learn from them. In my opinion, taking part in events like these will shape you more than academics. And there are plenty of events all year round organized by the Civil Engineering Association and our department. Uh, this is a site of uh, at our campus. This is a basketball court and the Wi-Fi desk where students can use our college Wi-Fi. 
and uh, apart from the curriculum we have had a number of field trips and industrial visits throughout the course period we visited the lnt tunneling Ex excellence academy which introduced us to tunneling and its various processes in addition to this visit i had the greatest privilege of visiting the atal tunnel in person which was sponsored by AICT for excelling students. This is a picture we have taken at the Atal Tunnel. I'm very grateful to our department and our faculties who made these visits possible. The exposure that I gained during these field visits is invaluable. At SVC, it is a part of our curriculum to take up internships. Under the guidance of our excellent faculties, I was able to apply for and secure a paid internship at CMRN where I was one among the 10 students from all over India. The duration of this internship was three months, and I'm extremely grateful for the support and guidance I received from our faculties throughout the internship period. Uh, we have had uh, amazing career support from our college and the department. They are very determined to provide the students with all possible options for a successful careers. We have had dedicated a dedicated placement cell, apart from which we have had many faculty-initiated courses to enhance the students. The training classes for competitive exams like GATE and industry-relevant software like Primavera delivered by our faculties have been extremely helpful. Apart from this, all my faculties were easy to approach regarding any queries that we have. Many teachers have inspired and motivated me throughout my study and have helped me in deciding my career path. Most of my friends have been chosen great, have chosen great career paths in various sectors of the industry. And I, for one, I have uh, been offered a place to study further at uh, University of Leeds in the UK. All these wouldn't have been possible without the constant support and guidance from our college. I wish you all utilize the plethora of opportunities that you are faced, at, faced with at SVC and reach great heights. I heartily wish you all the very best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Darshini. So you have covered a lot of points. I request uh, Ms. Nancy to take over the session. Nancy? Sure, ma'am. I'm yeah, so she, Yeah, one second. Yeah, so she's a very meritorious student. And she has got a multiple offers uh, through campus placement. And currently, she is uh, doing her intern in Grand Coast. And I, uh, she can also introduce herself if any points to be required. And keep me for the session, Nancy. Sure, ma'am. Is my screen visible? Uh, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone having a great day. So, uh, I'm Nancy, senior student of SVC. So, I'm here to uh, discuss about my campus life at SVC. So, before we into that, my experience sharing section. This is the table of content that I'm going to share. Um, first, self introduction about me and what are the expectations you will have and the various clubs they have, as well as the technical and cultural events. Then, what are the kind of facilities they have, as well as the good placement cell, uh, intro about the good placement cell, how good it is. So, uh, before getting into that, I'm Nancy. I completed my graduate civil engineering uh, in SVC, belonging to the batch 2018 to 2022. Now I'm currently working in Grand Force Pump Private India Limited as a graduate engineer training. Uh, this uh, company opportunity I got through only uh, SVC through the placement cell. So this is the link screen. If you want to contact me or any detail about it, you can connect me through this. So, uh, so everybody in this age after completion of 12 will have an expectation what my college life would be. Obviously, me too had I had an expectation. I studied in a higher secondary education which provided only focused on academic. Uh, so I want my college life to be fun, lenient, as well as to provide freedom, as well as to have social interaction with the people, as well as uh, to provide a good learning atmosphere, self-knowledgeable staff, and everything, as well as the lab facilities to be uh, superb so I can learn. So that was my expectation to be said that SEC provided everything. Uh, in the sense of freedom, if I said, uh, they are, mobiles are allowed. So uh, in this generation, we need to be explore the world. We should be in a situation to uh, 
compete with others this can be provided uh, only if we are update in our world so that freedom is provided as well as there should be a courage to communicate with us people so there is no restriction in talking with the other gender people but uh, that uh, in this uh, some days in colleges that's not restricted but if you are learning together within your limit that limitations are not uh, restricted in svc so we will have a full wide exposure uh, and also in svc they don't spoon feed you so if you are uh, want to explore a lot if you want to learn a lot there will be lots of opportunity available so only thing is you have to go and grab it that is an uh, immense opportunity uh, svc provides to us so these are the various clubs uh, that we have in svc i have listed only few among that if you go to the websites you will have many more websites like uh, red ribbon club you to cross and tamil mandram if you are so uh towards tamil and to uh, to towards english you can join speakers forum where uh, it builds you uh, your leadership quality as well as uh, increase your communication skill and also have a photo club and music club all these clubs are present and provide various opportunity to uh, express your feelings express your talents to the community so if you are interested you can go and join this club and you can express yourself to the world that who we are who you want to build up to be as well as there is an svc epic which is an entrepreneurship promotion and incubation center so which uh, helps you to if you have any idea or if you are, uh, want to know what is entrepreneurship if you want to inculcate that skill this is a perfect club that you want to be a member of that as well as we have ncc and nss clubs and as well as yrc clubs so where we can do blood donation camps will be happening so there will be lots of opportunities will be available you can go and uh, perform and express your skills so uh, the only thing that makes svc from other engineering college is that you will have opportunity here most of the colleges doesn't have provide opportunity if they provided there is restriction but that is not here we have lots and wide of opportunities available only thing is you have to go and get it so that's one among the thing so coming to the technical event this is one among the technical event that we have participated as a project presentation uh, that as a group project we have uh, this due to a covid that was conducted online so we have participated and presented our project and also won a uh, first prize so which helped us to be so strong in technical as well as towards to do something and help to learn and what's going on in the surrounding so it all we also will uh, build up some uh, positive points towards your personally so not only it will provide only extra curricular things on the academic oriented it's a uh, best college to be said and in uh, for uh, like in most of the colleges we have seen like uh, there is no uh, technical events for co departments like civil automobile uh, mechanical electrical but we have lot of variety of technical uh, events opportunities only thing is that you have to go and grab it and you have to use the what are the opportunities they are providing it uh, uh, this is one of the project presentation that we have done and that's a picture of us Uh, winning the certificate and getting congratulation message from uh, uh, SVCB. So this is an another technical event uh, for an oratorical competition based on uh, civil engineering. So in that I uh, have one third prize. So it helps you to build up your soft skill, which is required after four years of completion of your college. That's a inbuilt of uh, soft skill is the most important thing. That's the way you can communicate with the people. And networking is an another important thing. So all these things. as a civil engineer is the most important thing so all this thing up to 12 standard will have somewhat but in this four years of college it will really helps you to build up a lot of uh, uh, your uh, character building so all this will surely help you at the end of the four year so uh, at the end of the four year i had a mindset that i want to complete my college that why i have enjoyed also without uh, regretting that i didn't learn anything so that is what we provided that i learned something i also have a beautiful fun learning experience in fcc uh, so this is a, also we have some industrial visit so one is to tunnel excellence academy uh, which uh, given a deep knowledge about uh, ta- how tunneling works and uh, all these are the new experience so we can able to understand all the field experience not only they provide academic experience they also provide you field experience and uh, this is one of the industrial visit that we went for a uh, brick manufacturing and center so you can see the smiling faces that at the end of the day you will have a fun also and a good learning for it so 
also not only you can say we have technical events we also have cultural events like symposiums and the college day celebration as well as highway and women's day celebrations so uh, all these will be fun as well as good uh, and will give you a good kind of feel that you are doing something what for so so coming to the, the facilities and placement we have uh, facilities like uh, library which has variety of books you can go and grab it and uh, in built classes and as well as having a uh, two canteen with good food and we have a, a coffee day and a having with uh, a nice uh, snacks and everything and so all as well as coming to placements we have um uh list of facilities as i to said that i got placed so these are the companies uh recently last year came to recruit us these are the core companies on the uh, right side you, sorry on the left side you can see list of the recruiters i have listed only few of the uh, civil core companies that recruited the civil mechanical and triple as well as uh uh so some of the companies are piana vincon energy grand force from private limited com um, comfortech and kemsa bgr engineering system kalishwari uh, adani technic pinaka all these companies recruiters came to our college to help you so we uh, will be in a dilemma whether they will be getting a course placement if they said placement will have only it placement but they are start recruiting even the course placements also are also going on this i came to no college after i I uh, got selected one day in the group, and that's the time I came to know uh, uh, that the SSC is providing even good placements nowadays. So if you are not interested in the core, if you want to get into IT, even IT services are also providing. Like some of the instead service based companies are uh, listed below, like Cognos and Infosys. So total at the end of the four year, you will not regret that why you took civil. Uh, that why you took SSC. That's what I want to say. That it will be a full of fun learning as well as productive uh, four years. So uh, also we have uh, updated all our classrooms with projectors and speakers. So it will be an uh, uh, visual representation for you. So it will help you to uh, grasp the things so quickly. And as I told, we have variety of facilities and also provide support in preparing for GATE and GRE and CAT. So, if you are in uh, so interested in to prepare for GATE or any other exam competitive exams, so you can sit with the staff. The friends, the staff are so friendly and so knowledgeable. If you go and just sit with them, and if you ask any doubt, even even after the classes, they will be so ready to provide you the things. So it's in your hand. Uh, like opportunities will be provided, Charlie and Susi. That uh, that too, first world department. If it's in your hand, whether you are gonna go grab it or whether you gonna sit simply or just not gonna use it. So it's your four years that you want to enjoy and that will be so productive. So this is my four years of experience that I'm not gonna regret, and this will be always in my mind. So thank you, Susi, for providing me such a nice opportunity, and thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Nancy, for sharing your experience at SVC and uh, telling thank the placement opportunity also in the core industries. Thank you so much. Yeah, about the uh, civil engineering at SVC, I request uh, Dr. M. Selva Kumar uh, to talk about the civil engineering at SVC. Before that, I would like to give a very short uh, introduction about him. So he is associate professor at Department of Civil Engineering and also our assistant HOD. So he has done his master's in urban engineering from uh, CEG Gindi and PhD in transportation engineering from IIT Madras. He had been senior engineering consultant at LNT Infrastructure Engineering Limited uh, from 2008 to 13. And since 2013, he has been associate professor in uh, Department of Civil Engineering, SVC. Now I request Dr. M. Selva Kumar to take over the session. Thank you very much, madam. I'll share the screen.
நம்ம ஸ்கிரீன் இஸ் விசிபிள் எஸ் சார் थैंक यू तो थैंक यू वेरी मच ஐ பிரீஃப் அபவுட் அபவுட் சிவில் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் இன் த்ரீ அண்டர் த்ரீ ஹெட்டிங்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஒன் த ஃபெசிலிட்டிஸ் விச் ஆர் அவைலபிள் இன் அவர் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் அண்ட் அபவுட் அவர் கரிக்குலம் ப்ரெசன்ட் கரிக்குலம் வி வில் ஐ பிரீஃப் அபவுட் தட் தென் ஃபைனலி வி டிஸ்கஸ் சி அபவுட் த அலிமினி அச்சீவர்ஸ் மேஜர் அலிமினி அச்சீவர்ஸ் சி ஸோ ஸோ அவர் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆக்சுவலி ஸ்டார்டட் இன் த இயர் டூ தௌசண்ட் எயிட் வித் அன் ஆனுவல் இன் டேக் ஆஃப் தேர்ட்டி and in 2013 it was raised to 60 uh, and uh, we became autonomous in the year 2016 that is uh, we are flexible to frame our own curriculum and syllabus uh, and in 2018 we changed to choice based credit system which is more flexible the student can choose his subject based on his interest so then in uh, the year 2020 the first batch of uh, autonomous passed out from our uh, department this is our uh, faculty profile so we have uh, in total 12 faculty members expertise in different domains of civil engineering uh, we have two uh, professors two associate professors and eight uh, assistant professors uh, in the uh, among eight assistant professors for three of them are doing phd uh, now so the faculty are expertise in structural environmental geotechnical hydrology and water resources construction management and transportation so we have a good laboratory facilities with that we are carrying out consultancy and research work in the areas of like rcc and steel structures innovative new building materials traffic model studies water treatment and conservation studies and so on so in our department uh, we have uh, different laboratories uh, related to different dealing with the different subjects like uh, strength of materials lab uh, fluid mechanics and machinery lab surveying lab soil mechanics lab and so on and uh, in addition to that we have a separate uh, department library facility in addition to the central library facility uh in our laboratories our college allot uh, fund for every year for uh, renovation or renewal of uh, or purchase of new equipments so our lab all the labs are uh, having uh, new or latest equipments the first the uh, strength of material lab is having uh, the following equipments like a utm the universal testing machine with a 400 kN capacity torsion testing machine for steel rods brenel brenel uh, harness testing machine wood testing machines so these are some of the photographs of uh, the strength of materials impact testing machine torsion similarly fluid mechanics and machinery lab is well equipped with the latest equipments like uh, centrifugal pumps orifice meters impulse turbines and and so on these are some of the pictures of uh, the fluid mechanics lab francis turbine pelton wheel turbines and similarly surveying lab is uh, having latest equipments like uh, total stations which is widely used in industries for uh, doing survey carrying out survey and a hand handled uh, gps laser uh, laser distance meter this is a total picture of your total station the handheld gps which is used to track the vehicle this is merely soil mechanics lab is having equipments like direct shear apparatus relative density sand laboratory one shear test these are the some of the equipments major equipments in the soil lab ucc test universal combustion and permeability test apparatus three gang consolidation test setup and concrete and highway laboratory which is mainly to do the test on concrete and highway materials in the concrete lab 
apart from the uh, universal testing machine from in uh, strength of material and in concrete lab separate uh, universal testing machine is there with the capacity of 400 kN and CTM with 1000 kN capacity rebound hammer which is a non destructive equipment to test the strength of concrete CBR apparatus aggregate impact testing machine and so on this is a view of a universal testing machine this is a fourth 400 kN capacity. It's a Los Angeles abrasion test to test the aggregate strength. Compression testing machine, CTM with 1000 kN capacity, Marshall stability apparatus. An environmental lab is a, a, it's mainly for to test the water as well as wastewater uh, quality. So we have a digitized uh, oxygen analyzer, spectro. Uh, photometer and flame photometers these are latest equipments which are used to test the water as well as best water and in uh, we have very good uh, canned laboratory which is uh, having 40 computers uh, all are uh, having the softwares latest software like stat pro and we recently purchased e tabs uh, for especially for project work student project work this is the view of our uh, cad lab so these are the facilities which are available in our department next the uh, curriculum so we have a, a recently following the choice based curriculum or 18 so the courses are uh, split in and placed under different headings like uh, humanities and social science, basic sciences, engineering sciences, professional core, which are directly related to civil engineering. Apart from that, professional elective course and open elective course, which are offered by other, department, uh, other departments, uh, employment em enhancement courses like project work, internships, and mandatory courses. So Indian uh, constitu uh, constitution is offered as a mandatory course in R18 curriculum. These are the features, the open elective, employability enhancement course, industrial training and internship, special electives, value added courses, which bridges the gap between the industry and the academia, online courses and industrial visits. So the open elective courses, uh, which are offered by the other departments. So now the, the government also encouraging uh, the interdisciplinary research. So for that, uh, these type of courses are very much helpful for the students to take up the other department courses. Uh, similarly, the employment enhancement courses like project work, which is generally done by the student in the seventh and eighth semester, and internship uh, as per our uh, 2018 curriculum, internships uh, and industrial visits are made compulsory. So every student should go internship for a minimum period of two weeks in a reputed industry. So for that, we are making facilities. Uh, and the professional uh, practices, case studies in the industrial trainings. So these are some of the companies where the students underwent uh, uh, internships like uh, Chennai Metro Rail, Highway Research Station in Chennai, Highway, Highways Department, uh, the Indian Cement Company, PNC Projects, all pause. So apart from the open elective uh, courses and uh, core uh, elective courses, special elective courses also offered in our 18 curriculum. So which are uh, like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, which is having more influence on civil engineering application in many field, like that uh, the general topics like uh, corporate finance, the management side, the financial statement analysis managerial economics so these courses are very much helpful for students to take up a career in the management side so these are offered as a special elective course in addition to the regular courses so the value added courses mainly framed to bridge the gap between the industry as well as academia so these courses mainly taken up by the industrial experts so for example the application of planning tools uh, which may be taught by uh, industrial experts so that the students came to know about the recent uh, tools which are available for planning so like that the smart cities green building concept bim fundamentals for engineers and uh, the, the set of courses are there as a value added course so 
So apart from the, all these courses, the students are encouraged and motivated to take up online courses which are offered by NPTEL, SWAM, and uh, not uh, abroad universities. So, uh, so these opportunities also given for the students. So in this case, and if a student want to uh, drop a, a professional elective, then he can take a online course instead of that. He can take a online course and he can he may opt or uh, drop a. Uh, professional elective course. So such options are there in R18 curriculum. As per our regulation, the all uh, industrial visits are uh, mandatory. So each student should undergo at least one industrial visit every year. See, these are the some organization where the students went industrial training. The uh, Institute of Hydraulic and Hydrology, Pundi, Chennai Port Trust, LNT Tunneling Academy, yeah, LNT. Uh, Ultracon Priestessing uh, Limited, Chennai Metropolitan uh, Water Supply and Sewerage Board, South Nur Dam. So the students are encouraged uh, in a way of uh, giving scholarship, like a management scholarship for meritorious students and merit come means uh, scholarships for uh, uh, students and management scholarship, like sports based uh, scholarships are available. So apart from that, intramural research funding they are providing for uh, to uh, carry out project work in the eighth semester. Uh, so the best project is chosen, and the uh, intramural fund is provided by our college to purchase for the purchase of materials to do project work. And uh, the good project works are motivated to publish in re good research journals as well as conferences. And we provide uh, career guidance for higher studies. Uh, we provide the letter of uh, recommendations if needed for the students and a uh, technical training uh, and uh, the gate training we are providing for the gate coaching classes we are reg regularly content conducting for the students. For uh, further motivation we have the academic counseling so every month uh, there is a counseling session is there at a class level. So if a student wants to take a personal counseling, there is a counselor is there at our institute. If he, if he or she wants to have a separate or individual counselling, he, he can meet the counsellor and get counselled. Uh, special classes we are conducting after the regular class hours, we are conducting special classes for uh, the needy students and uh, motivating to participate uh, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. And we provide, uh, the college provides ads at, uh, toppers for the providing certificate for CAD toppers to motivate them to perform better. And we also conduct a special coaching classes for TANSET, uh, gate, gate examinations, and students are motivated to take up online courses and merit scholarships are there. And for the first year, and the Budding Bright Engineers Award is provided to motivate the first year students. The industry institute interaction, so the industry involvement in the curriculum is very much important to know the recent development. So for that, we are regularly inviting the industrial expert to deliver talk or a guest lecture. Uh, similarly, the, some of the courses which are more uh, required, the latest technology, the partial delivery is arranged. That is, a part of the course is delivered by the industrial experts. And uh, industrial projects are very much encouraged. The students carry out their eighth semester project in the industry and industrial training and internships. So through, through these ways, we are uh, continuously regularly interacting with the industry. So we have a, a memorandum of understanding with the National Navy Authority of India. And uh, the students are able to go for the internship this is mainly this MOU for the internship, students' internship as well as the project work. So for uh, the better teaching learning uh, process, we have all the classrooms are equipped with a PowerPoint presentation uh, as well as the mic facilities. And we regularly arranging the guest lectures of industrial experts and we industrial visits we are arranging and industrial trainings and internships opportunities are also made for the students. And uh, the faculties are uh, uh, using different tools for uh, better understanding, for better teaching learning uh, process, like uh, 
uh, model a model based teaching so we have a model lab so we have models so based on that they using that uh, they teach in the class and flipped classrooms mind mapping use of animations and graphs uh, creating lectures on YouTube and it is uh, uploaded in the YouTube so a student can watch at any time and the recent uh, uh, IT tools like iTest, Edmodo, Module so though these tools are used for uh, uh, giving assignments okay for evaluation so all these things are used and NPTEL video lectures also uh, encouraged to see the uh, watch the students so this is a model lab so we have uh, the for major infrastructure we have uh, models so using that the teacher uh, teach, teaches in the class in a better way this is a drawing models so uh, apart from the regular uh, classroom teaching as i said the seminars uh, are arranged for students uh, as a like a uh, assignment so the students are encouraged to give seminars uh, the faculty gave you a topic he prepares and give you a delivery a seminar and guest lectures are arranged uh, regularly and there is a artifix uh, function symposium is conducted every year so this is full and full uh, managed or uh, arranged by the uh, students okay only the monitoring part is done by the faculty members so all the things are done by the uh, students so that they can showcase their uh, talent. So we have civil engineering, strong civil engineering association, which is having link with uh, many or uh, bo civil engineering bodies like uh, Indian Concrete Institute, IEI, I, Indian Green Building Council. So uh, based in this uh, civil engineering association, uh, we are arranging regularly the many seminars, uh, workshops, uh, and guest lectures. So these are some of the pictures of the uh, workshops and artifacts where the students uh, make some models and uh, demonstrate and it is evaluated by the external member and for the best model uh, we give uh, awards, prizes. These are some of the models which are created by the students. And some of the programs which are organized, the guest lectures. So uh, we are regularly, every year we are publishing a civil engineering magazine, uh, which majorly consists of major programs which are organized, the faculty development, industrial visits which are organized in the particular year, student achievements, co-curricular activities, and so on. These are some of the co-curricular activities uh, which took, uh, our students uh, took part. So these, uh, these are some of the our alumni achievers. Uh, so up to 2019, that is a 2015-19 batch, we are under an university curriculum. So among from 2012 to 2019, 13 university rank holders were there, the an university rank holders. And uh, these are some students uh, excelled in gate examination. In gate 2021 top scorer, uh, the 21 toppers uh, scorers. See. These are some of the IMEs, uh, those who are uh, completed their master's degree in abroad and they are working in abroad as of now. So, So these uh, alumni completed UG here, and then they joined PG in uh, Indian uh, universities like uh, Anna University, VIT Velour, Indian Maritime University, Vishakhapatnam. These are elite uh, alumni who are uh, say this. Uh, uh, Appointed in government as well as uh, a got job in foreign uh, uh, industries. 
they're working and joined in a, a Tamil Nadu police service two of them joined in Tamil Nadu police service working in ALNT So uh, apart from that, some of the uh, alumni or became a successful entrepreneurs. So they started their own companies. Uh, so the, uh, these are the placement co companies which are visiting our campus for placement. So the, our department vision is to become a department of excellence in civil engineering education and research producing globally competent civil engineers to serve the industry and society. So the above vision is achieved by, through the following mission statements like providing state-of-the-art resources, that is facilities that contribute to an excellent learning environment, importing necessary skills, cultivating moral and ethical values among students, Establishing regular interaction and collaboration with industries through IV, IPTs. Motivating the student to take up competitive exam like GATE. Uh, the pursue higher education. Promoting research and development activities in emerging areas of different domains of civil engineering. And offering services to society and industry through education, research and consultancy activities. The following... Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, the following statement, uh, you can see that uh, uh, how much amount of uh, fund is uh, uh, diverted to the various infrastructure project. For example, the government uh, suggested to invest around 5 million crore of money to for railways. So this statement shows that the uh, bro, the huge scope for the civil engineers in India. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So, for Thank giving you. elaborating about the uh, facilities and supports available in the department. So from the participants, if there are any queries, you may please ask uh, regarding uh, civil engineering or civil engineering at SVC. OK, then. Uh, so finally, uh, I request Mr. G. Arun, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, to propose a word of thanks. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure and honor to propose the word of thanks for the successful completion of Pathways 2022. I thank Mr. Arun, our proud alumnus from 2011-15 batch, for sharing his experience. I also thank Mr. Nagesh Pradasami, Zonal Head, South Ultratech Cements Limited, for the wonderful presentation. I thank Ms. Ruby Freya, Assistant Professor, for uh, the talk on careers in civil engineering. I thank my dear students, Darshini and Nancy of Final Year Civil Engineering for sharing their experience, uh, for sharing their experience in their uh, at SVC. I thank Dr. M. Silvakumar, Associate Professor and Assistant HOD, for having briefed about uh, the civil engineering department, the curriculum, and the support provided to the students studying here. And I thank Dr. R. Kumuda, Professor and Head of the Department, Department of Civil Engineering, for arranging the event. I thank all participants and upcoming civil engineers for their patient listening and hope you have a lot of impressive take home messages. 
I thank the college management for giving uh, the department the opportunity to uh, showcase the department. Thank you.